joins me from Strasbourg. Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, some strong words here from the IMF. A British exit from the EU could pose major challenges. And they're talking about this country and Europe as a whole. Yeah, I think the IMF lost their way a few years ago. They got directly involved with the Eurozone bailouts, despite uh, their charter not suggesting they should behave in that way. Of course, their previous leader was Dominic Strauss-Kahn. It's now Christine Lagarde. So the architects of the European Union and the Euro um, have effectively hijacked the International Monetary Fund, uh, made it an outpost of the European Union, um, and turned it really overtly political in a way that the founders of the IMF never ever foresaw. Well, so the IMF is not an independent economic body, is that what you mean? I think the IMF was respected for decades as being an independent economic body, uh, which when the Eurozone hit, and under the leadership of their two big bosses, has become intensely political uh, and is there and sees one of its main jobs now to support the project of European Union and indeed the Euro itself. So, so it's just wrong. Everything it's outlined in the last hour is just incorrect, is it? Well, we can debate whether it's right or wrong, and I believe it's wholly wrong. Uh, the fact is, the IMF should not even be commenting on this way. I mean, to have gone so far, uh, you know, as to, as to suggest, uh, you know, geopolitical shifts, um, if Britain votes to have a trade deal with Europe, rather than be a member of political union, strikes me as being outside their remit. OK, well, well everyone watching one hopes or has the right to go to the yeah. polls anyway on, on June the 23rd so people have to make a decision so who do you suggest they should believe what what international body is there what economics body is there that, that they should believe well all the ones all the ones that are part of the uh, sort of institutional infrastructure of big government be suspicious of they're all the same people they're all interchangeable they go from being government ministers to working for the IMF to working for the European Commission uh, you know what this is about uh, this is about big politics and big banks and big businesses trying to bully the British people into staying part of a status quo that is not really working and and you know when they talk about economic shots, shocks I mean the Austrian banking system um, and Greece needing a fourth bailout uh, which is very likely over the course of this summer they will cause far bigger shocks than Britain and all we're doing is changing our relationship right but, but the IMF is talking about among other things it's saying there has already been an impact. The very fact that there is going to be a referendum in a few months' time has already created uncertainty for business, and that is already having an impact. So the IMF would say, we can witness, we can experience that impact already. That, 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 that is happening. Well, well Deutsche Börse have just launched a £20 billion bid to take over the London Stock Exchange. Uh, Toyota have announced they're investing in new plant, as have several other uh, foreign-owned manufacturers. Uh, and these arguments about investment, I mean, look, I heard these same arguments from all the big global institutions 15 years ago who told Britain if she didn't join the euro, direct investment into our country would dry up to almost nothing and in fact we've led the rest of the EU for the last 15 years. So uh, these are scare stories, these are warnings, this is about politics, not about economics. It's about defending this European Union and you know I was with uh, the French Prime Minister Manuel Valls at lunchtime and he said very clearly uh, that if Britain leaves the European Union it will do political damage to the U European Union itself and he's right. Britain leaving will damage the European Union. It may even give us a Europe a few years down the road of sovereign democratic nation states working and trading together. But, but it would damage trade as well, wouldn't it? Because if, as a nation, we all woke up on June the 24th, discovered that Britain had, had voted to leave the EU, there are years and years of, of trade deals, uh, agreements that would need unpicking. And that would be a long, laborious well, process. And surely that Surely it's, it's, it's not wrong to say that that would cause enormous uncertainty and therefore have an enormous economic impact. Well, that's what the Prime Minister would like us to think, because he's trying to scare us. The fact is, uh, we vote to leave on June the 23rd. Uh, we then, through the treaties that we're signed up to, invoke something called Article 50, which means for up to two years, all our trade <laughs> arrangements for up to two years are completely unaffected. They'll be the same as they were on June the 22nd, and we have two years to sort ourselves out. And if you look around the world, 
you know, countries like Australia, you know, they negotiated a complex trade deal with America, uh, done, start to finish, in 10 months. Uh, we're being told we can't do it. We're being told we're not big enough. We're being told we're not strong enough. What the Prime Minister is really telling us is we're not good enough. Well, I, I, you know, I'm absolutely certain that we can do this comfortably within two years. Nigel Farage, thank you very much for joining us there from Strike. You didn't frankly have the balls to put country before party.